Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Barry from Moss Pawn and Gun and we got another gun gripe for you today. Um, I know this has been a popular series and people have been uh, very happy with this and we definitely want to keep things going. We know you guys enjoy it. Uh, the gun gripe series in general kind of started more or less as a joke. Right. I think its initial, um, you know, versions of it was just more of like us just playing around on it but it seems that people have really taken right. well to this series and you know we want to keep it going with more serious subjects. Well we've done a lot of shooter stuff in the past like the 4473 and things like that and the 68 gun control act but now sure. we're getting into something that everybody can relate to. Today it's going to be like uh, guns and horror movies. Or the lack of guns and horror movies. Oh, hey, yeah. You know the, around Halloween here we were thinking of hey you know what would be a good Halloween or horror movie or horror uh, genre related gun gripe and we thought well hey what better than guns and horror movies mm -hmm. and it's always like you know if there's guns and horror movies more times than not either one they jam or they don't work or the hero or whoever you know it's never in reach it's always just mm -hmm. slightly out of reach whatever mm -hmm. happens or uh, you know Barry made a good point the other day we were talking about it and he mentioned Jurassic Park where of course the, the you know badass dinosaur hunter has a SPAS-12 that you right. know never gets a shot off and then the hero in the movie, Dr. Grant, is able to get a few shots off uh, towards the Velociraptor. But he had to throw the gun down because it was stovepipe jammed. Right, right. So you know what I think is funny about that particular movie, I know um, Jurassic Park isn't necessarily a horror movie, um, but I think it's funny how Dr. Hammond uh, in the movie says on several occasions, he said, we spared no expense, we spared no expense. I just think it's funny how they spared no expense and they bought the most expensive shotgun they could get their hands on, but yet still it, it didn't work. Didn't work. So well now right. of course in the recent zombie movies you see a lot of guns being fired and things like that, but up until the zombie uh craze took took over, a horror movie was uh some kind of a beast from outer space that chased you and you know the woman always runs and sprains her ankle and then the monster gets her and nobody has a gun and so on and so forth that's right but until the zombie thing took over you really didn't see a lot of firearms being used in hollywood movies i think we're finding more now that what is what is going on what's happening in the horror genre is that guns are taking more of a predominant stage in the way things are done like of course the walking dead series Firearms are, you know, predominantly displayed all the times and mm -hmm. used. Um, other horror movies like Night of the Living Dead, uh, the original Night of the Living Dead, of course, they went into the farmhouse, holed themselves up. In the basement, they found a 30-30 and some ammo, so they got lucky. Right. They weren't prepared. Uh, of course, you have movies like The Devil's Rejects, which, of course, I love. Uh, you know, House of a Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects, those movies are great. Um, and The Devil's Rejects, of course, um, you know the the lady there that was had the people held hostage. Uh, one of the uh, the ladies there that's being held hostage makes a move or something happens, and uh, you know basically it ends up occurring to where the lady with the guns like, well, this gun's not loaded. This is just mine power. It's mine power. And the whole time she right. had an unloaded 1911 with no ammo in it. Right. But yet it was just that psychological factor that she had a gun. Those people do whatever she said just because she had the gun. And then she ends up killing the lady with a knife. But even so, in horror movies you know. like The Devil's Rejects, uh, Sheriff Waddell, when they invaded the uh, compound, uh, he's carrying a uh, Remington Model 11 that holds five shells, and he's continuously firing, never yeah. running out of ammunition. But that's going to be another video we're going to do. We're going to do some Hollywood guns that never run out of ammo, but this is all about the horror movies. Right. You know, and in horror movies, you're going to see those kind of things. Uh, one of my favorite use of guns in horror genre is Evil Dead. And the Evil Dead, Army of Darkness series with Bruce Campbell. Uh, Bruce Campbell, of course, you know, gets to a point where his hand gets chopped off, and he takes a 12 gauge shotgun, tapes it to his hand, and of course he can shoot the 12 gauge as it's taped to his hand, even though he has no hand. Right. Whatever. But I think it's funny how uh, you know he ends up with a shotgun, and um, of course, you know, in Evil Dead, when Bruce Campbell shoots. Uh, some bad guy with a shotgun. Of course, they fly across the room, you know, clear well, across the room. Oh, yeah, the uh, 180 pound man is lifted off the ground and, and hurled through a plate glass window it's, or something like that. And with that, again, we're getting back to like Hollywood stuff. <laughs> we are going to explore some of those Hollywood gun myths in more detail as time goes on and a couple of field gun gripes. And, uh, you know, we'll show never ending magazines, you know. Basically, we may even try to come up with some measure of force that it would require to lift a person off the ground if they were shot at. Right. And we would try to maybe get either a tailor knockdown 
formula number mm -hmm. or some kind of figure that would give us some quantifiable data that you would know what it would take to actually replicate right. that right. person being slung across the room or whatever. I mean, it would take a severe amount of power. But the Hollywood video we're going to do is going to uh, replicate what they do in Hollywood, which is impossible. Uh, uh, Curving bullets. In, I mean, uh, in uh, Desperado, when Antonio Banderas kicked this man off his chest with two nine millimeters, he keeps him suspended in air. That's right. Uh, I don't think so. But that's what Hollywood does. And you would think that Hollywood would have advisors on the set that would tell them, look, this is impossible. We well, you know, and there's various examples of that in different movies. I mean, like in Dirty Harry, of course, the round counts are pretty dang close. Right. Of course, there are a few instances where he fires six shots when the particular gun he had only held five, right? A 44 Magnum? No, it was a, it was it a was a six. 29 six shot. Okay, it was a six mm -hmm. shot. Uh, but then you have other instances, like for instance in uh, Terminator 2, um, the sections where Sarah Connor is shooting a 1911 in various uh, areas of the movie, mm -hmm. and of course she wraps out like 21 or 28 shots mm -hmm. out of a 1911 without reloading. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, there are little things in that movie that if you pay close attention to, for instance, when Arnold shoots the guard uh, in front of the, uh, the science building, wherever the lab, mm -hmm. Uh, he, you, you see him reach and take his extra 1911 magazine. Right. So at least they made some effort to look like, hey, they grabbed extra ammo, whatever. But mm -hmm. of course, uh, you you don't really see them actually reload quite in the way that you would in a realistic situation. Right. Um, by the way, that that 1911 in that movie is awesome. I, I did watch that movie last night actually, and um, watching um, you know Sarah Connor in the movie shoot that 1911 is awesome. I mean the fireballs it throws out oh, yeah. are awesome. Of course the fireballs that movie guns throw out are a little bit unrealistic but nonetheless they are awesome for the big screen and, and I really love the fireballs in that movie of course Arnold with the M79, uh, the minigun, I mean all that stuff is great for Hollywood but of course you know that the recoil impulse on a minigun would knock you over you know if you could shoot it. Well, you know? we can do two. We can do two additional videos on Hollywood. We can do one, the never-ending magazine, the never-ending uh, amount of ammunition, mm -hmm. and we can do another one, Hollywood mistakes. Right. If you watch a movie and you're a gun aficionado, you can watch one scene and pick five or six mistakes that they make in the movie, and That's it, right. it, it, sometimes the gun even changes to a different brand. That's right of gun in the same scene. That's right, and, and you notice little things like that. Uh, for instance, back to Terminator 2, when Sarah Connor is um, trying to assassinate the fellow at his house, the, right. the computer geek or whoever, right. well, you know, she opens up with a full auto AR, and you notice it's that one particular arrangement of AR, but then later, when they steal the SWAT van to get uh -huh. away from the uh, T-1000, uh -huh. she goes to grab an AR off the rack, it's the same AR she had in the other scene. Right. Right. So even though that AR was in the SWAT team's van and she didn't know it was right. there. There's a lot of setups right. in the movies. Right. Uh, it's that, the same rifle. Yeah. Is, uh, is the but we, right. we can do one with a never-ending magazine. We can do one right. with the uh, Hollywood fantasy guns. And we can do one with the mistakes. That's right. I could probably name a hundred mistakes in a movie right in, in movies right now for you. Oh yeah. But Wes, that's going to be in another video. We'll, we'll cover that in another video. Right. Getting back to horror movies, one of the things that that always gets me um, with horror movies too is how it seems like there's always some knife wielding maniac, uh, you know, going crazy trying to slice people apart or whatever. And where are the guns? I mean, sure, you know, like in for instance, the movie Scream where this guy, like, he's going around, like, killing everybody with knives and, and stupid things like that. You know, if that movie would, ha would have happened in Locust Grove, Georgia, uh, it would yeah. be over in about five minutes right. because be somebody would pull a knife and walk in the door and there'd be some lady with a 10-gauge blow them away. But, again, it's horror movies and it is a genre where I think people do want to feel like they're, they're able to kind of be a part of something that is dangerous and mysterious and outside of the normal realm, and I think that's why people appeal to horror movies. Well, they like, they like to feel the adrenaline right, rush. Right, they want to feel the rush of, you know, being chased or being right. in harm. Without any real danger to themselves. Correct, correct. So that's what the horror movies are about. Uh, that's right. Uh, but the guns in the horror movies, like I said, until the, uh, until the zombie apocalypse thing came along, you really didn't see a lot of guns in horror movies. Well, yeah, I, mean, I was watching the uh, previews for uh, next week's uh, Walking Dead episode, mm -hmm. and I noticed it looks like they're in a you know jail or prison, and they're trying to... I mean, I haven't really followed the show a whole heck of a lot, but I noticed in a lot of the scenes, they're getting a little bit more medieval in close contact. Instead of guns, 
I noticed in the scenes they had like hatchets and machetes and yeah. they were you know knocking zombies over the head and knocking their heads off and, and mm -hmm. it looked really cool so oh, yeah. um, there are a lot of examples where I think they try to go towards the the feeling that of what normal people would do I mean normal people if you're in a dangerous situation you have a means to defend yourself whether it be with you know sharp objects swords knives guns whatever you're gonna do whatever it takes to survive and I think just like the survival uh, horror type genre that has been so successful in video games and things like that I think is is tending to kind of go around more to the movie and TV show genre to where people are understanding that you know lots of people like guns lots of people think that thing is you know that kind of stuff is cool and uh, they gravitate to it well food for thought too and this doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about right now but food for thought there's always when you're in your home or wherever you work or whatever, look around you. There's always something you can use as a weapon. It might be a chair. It might be the top off of a commode. That That's would right. make a hell of a weapon if somebody had you pinned in the bathroom or whatever coming through the door. That's right. You take the top off that commode and you bash them in the head with it. There's always some weapon you can grab. Well, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, uh, you know, random places in your house that weapons and, and firearms and things like that can be that a lot of people right. don't even think to check. Right. Uh, one of my favorite is in Kill Bill uh, when, you know, basically the lady goes after the Hattori Hanzo sword mm -hmm. and there's another Hanzo sword that belonged to Bill that Bud had in the uh, the hall deal where right. I guess the, the broom closet right. where the umbrellas and stuff was. Mm -hmm. There was a Hanzo sword sticking there and see that's a great place to hide something like that right. in clear view. Because people would think something that valuable, a million dollar sword, would be put away or hidden or in a vault. But you wouldn't expect it in the, you know, near the broom closet with the umbrellas, you know. Well, if there's anything in a house that can be used as a weapon, a mop right. handle, uh, That's right. butcher knife, uh, yeah. there's always a weapon somewhere near you that you can use to defend yourself with. And you have to get into that survival mentality. And it's so funny in horror movies how what's the first thing they always reach for? They go to the kitchen, they grab the biggest knife they can find, and, you know, they're walking around with a knife like right. that's really going to help right. them. And, you know, it's always that the bad guys one up on them no matter what. I He's either the, got a gun or whatever. I love the ones where the guy goes and grabs up a golf club yeah. or a fire poker. That, yeah. That's one of the... <laughs> that's one of the major weapons in a horror movie. You grab your fire poker and walk around with it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Never a gun, though. That's right. That's no. right. But anyway, but anyway, we hope that this gun break was uh, somewhat short and sweet and informative. I mean, it, it's kind of neat to see people's reactions to what we do and that they enjoy the gun gripe series and what we do here. And we have tons of uh, suggestions that you guys send in to us, and we appreciate that, and we do listen to them and watch them. So hopefully, um, as these roll on, we're going to get into some you know cooler subjects. And as time goes on, hopefully your subject to be covered if it's uh, something that you recommended we do, we, we definitely read those. And by the way, the series We Shoot Your Stuff is taking off great. We're getting stuff from everywhere. Yep. So we're going to be doing a lot of that in the future, too. Yep, we've got several uh, packages from people, several items. Some of the items are a little obscure. Of course, you'll see those as we uh, blow them up each right. week. Uh, we do have several big projects in the works right now. I can't discuss anything about it. But once things roll down the line, I'll tell you more. But it's going to equate to some very large growth for the channel. It's going to equate to uh, some very good uh, business success on our end. You know, we should be selling more guns. We'll be getting more gunsmith and work. So as a whole, uh, we have several things that we're going to be uh, doing in the coming months that are going to uh, equate to some really good growth for the YouTube channel and ultimately uh, better videos for you guys. Okay. Well, that sounds like a good, uh, a good ending for this week. And uh, always remember to shake your ammo. Yeah, shake that ammo. Shake that ammo.